Pennsylvania, moved to LA. Born in Pennsylvania. Um, yeah, moved to LA when I was uh, 12. And then uh, my wife's from Australia, so. Your wife's from Australia. So you're yeah. Australia by marriage. Okay. Very cool. Exactly. So in the movie, there's a lot of, I would say, a lot of like failure, so to speak, in your trip until kind of the end. At least that's the way it's portrayed. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about about how that how more reality that is and obviously that's not the only trip you've done you've done many trips can you tell us a little bit about like how you handle the failure and what are the successes um yeah well first of all don't believe anything you see on tv it's <laughs> able to, uh, experience that live um they came with a uh, a bit of an agenda you know they they had a storyline they want to they they were pushing like how far will these people go to find one jew so they wanted us to go to the you know the most uh far reaching you know out there places in the desert where forget about jews there's no people oh okay oh um, Oh, you're breaking up a little bit. Say again. So there were no people there. Oh. No. Um, they, you know, we wanted to go along a regular route along the coast where there's, you know, we've got hundreds of people in and then we were like, no, we don't want the boring old. We go along a regular routes where we have people. Can you hear me? Can yeah, hear me? no, we hear you a little bit. Anything? Can you hear me now? Yeah, we hear you. It's a little breaking up, but we hear you. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we Oh, oh now we don't hear you. Um, along our regular routes where we have, you know, a lot, a lot more people, hundreds of people. Um, and they, okay, this is uh, Australia. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now we hear you. Yeah, we can't see you, but we hear you. Okay. Um, yeah, so they were very adamant. They didn't want the regular uh, Jewish gatherings. It doesn't make for great TV. They wanted, you know, the process. How far will they go? Um, having said so, we did actually meet a lot more Jews than than was portrayed. We had a, for example, in Alice Springs, we we were after a long a long long journey. We hadn't met anybody. Um, we we came to Alice Springs. We were told to meet the cameraman the next morning. You know, we got in late at night. We settled in. Um, we had to do some shopping. It was the first normal city we'd been to in a while. Um, so we needed to do some shopping anyway. The tank wouldn't fit in the regular shopping. Um, in, in the regular parking lot. So we had to go to the outdoor one, which is in Alice Springs. It's like the only normal, uh, the only normal store is in actually the city center, like downtown. I guess if, if you, if Alice Springs has a downtown, that would be the downtown. Mm -hmm. And um, so we were parked there. And as we were getting out, um, this lady came running out of a building and she literally gave me a hug. She <laughs> like, <laughs> she wrapped her arms around me. My wife's like, hey, yes, is there something I don't know about? I'm like, no, I don't know anybody in Alice Springs, I'm telling you. Um, basically, she's been living there for five years. She thought she was the only Jewish person there. Um, and she really connected. We went to her house later. Her, her son was turning three a few days later, and we, we had a great time. But because the cameras weren't on it, it was yeah. it was not with with the camera, so you know that that didn't make it to the the cut at all. Um, and we actually we came back there later that year on Pesach. That was in the in in July August time. We came back in the summer. So we came back on Pesach. We had about because of our trip, we had connected with a whole lot of people. We actually we had forty people for the seder. So wow, in yeah, in there, in that same area. Alice Springs, yeah. And having said wow. so, it's a very transient area. Today, today there's actually a WhatsApp group and they have a Facebook group and there's about 25 regulars um, on that group the whole time. But uh, some of our some of our greatest people is actually, funny enough, there's an American from Pittsburgh who lives there and we connected. Wow. Um, That's really yeah. funny. 
Now, last uh, question, and we'll let you go. Where you are very busy. Um, so today you you live you don't live in Melbourne anymore. And you're not uh, you're not doing the same kind of trips that you used to do, right? That's right. Yep. So how is that different being a rabbi in a in a community versus like being a rabbi whose job is to to you know run around the country and try to find random Jewish people? How has that shaped your community rabbinate or or is it is it the same? Is it different? It's just a different style. What do you, what do you think? Um, it is very different and also much of the same. Um, the actual talking to people, you, you have everything that you have in a regular community. We had when we did Rara, uh, just on a, I guess, once a year basis or, right. or going to be trying to roll it all in, but it's all, it's all about the same thing. It's the connection with people, bringing God to these people, uh, Judy's are making it, bring it alive. And that always happens no matter where you are. Um, we did. We were actually visiting our current place here, Newcastle, for for years as part of Rara. So that was a big part. Newcastle on the Central Coast, where we are now, that actually was a big part of of our job in Rara. So um, there was a lot of a continuation in with that, but very different. Very very different. I mean, um, you don't get to see the countryside like you used to. Um, people have crazier stories when they live out in the bush. Um, right. and, and, uh, they're just generally traveling with kids and then bringing down Bachar. We usually in Rara, they didn't portray this on the film, but most of what we actually do, and they still continue to do today is bringing down groups of, of rabbis. And they're the ones that, that go, that do these crazy trips across the countries. Right. Um, without, without, would, without little children. For, yeah, without little children, it's, it's not, it's not really... Uh, I mean, you could go with little children, but you're not going to be able to meet too many people, and it it really hinders your your progress. So the 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 young rabbis they go and they're very they're, they do a wonderful job, and they go literally across across the entire country. Um, that we don't have anymore. It's a lot simpler logistically. It was a logistic nightmare back then. Uh, imagine Passover, Pesach. You're going to make seder's in. I think we did twelve or thirteen places, and um, you got to arrange thirteen groups, thirteen sets of dishes for Passover, uh, 13 Airbnbs, et cetera. You can imagine, you can imagine the logistics. So that was, um, I'm glad that we don't have that part today. Um, I do miss, I do miss the adventure. I miss the, the, I guess like, you know, that you're these people's lifeline. Um, you miss some of those aspects in being where we are now. Very cool. Zach, any questions? I don't think so. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time and uh, mm -hmm. much success in your current position. Thank you. Likewise, same to you. Thank you. Bye-bye.